Hello, I'm Phil Cole. For almost the past 20 years, I've been calling all of the thrilling action at the major unlimited hydroplane races across the United States and Canada. Today, there's change in the air. A revolutionary new type of race boat will hit the circuit in 1970. It's called the Pride of Pay and Pack, and it may be the boat to turn hydroplane racing upside down. The owner of the Pride of Pay and Pack is Pay and Pack Stores in the Pacific Northwest, and their chairman of the board and representative owner, insofar as American Power Boat Association matters are concerned, is Dave Herensberger. Dave has had many race boats, and he's been a great competitor for several years. Dave, how did it all get started? Well, Phil, there's really quite a story in that. Uh, my first boat was in 1963. It was the community-owned boat, Miss Spokane, which had been wrecked in Reno, Nevada, in a boat race, and we went racing in 63. I think we've got seventh in National High Point standings. The following year, we run the same boat again, and I think we were fifth in High Point standings. In the boat race at Seattle, the Seafair race uh, of 1967, the dollar bill was for sale. And it was the first boat race I'd been to since the time I'd got out of the sport. I knew if I'd come back that uh, I would probably have to buy a boat. And we took it home, modified a couple engines, and then run it in Kelowna, I think, was the only race that we run in all year. Then the next race, or the next year, I should say, you changed everything about the dollar bill into the Miss Eagle Electric and had your greatest successes. Well, I decided that if you're going to win, and you're going to have to go with the best crew and the best driver and I and, and equipment and pursued the about six new engines. Uh, hired Colonel Warner Gardner to drive the boat. We started to have a good season. You won uh, several races, didn't you, Dave? Matter of fact, we won the first race after all of our modification in Gunnersville, Alabama, the very first race. We won all three heats, so we got a real good start that year. Then we went to Pasco, and fortunately to win all three heats there and win that, beat the Bardall again there. Then from there we went to Seattle and finished third. From Seattle, I think we went back to Washington, D.C. to the President's Cup, and we were fortunate enough to win that. And you won a real thriller there, didn't you? Yes, we had a couple of real good races with Bill Sterrett and Tommy Fultz, but the Colonel pulled them out. And we went to, uh, to uh, the last race, which was a Gold Cup in, in Detroit, and we were in second place going in the, into the in the final, and we're in second place, had to pass one boat, Bill Sterrick, the best Budweiser, to, to win the whole ball of wax, and the, the boat flipped. And Now, after that, Dave, uh, you decided to go another route, I believe, that was originally suggested by Warner Gardner, your trimaran, which you ran last year. Perhaps you could tell us about that. We decided that uh, we wanted to get something a little bit safer and a little bit stronger. So we, at that time, decided to start construction of the, of the outrigger uh, boat and have less starter builders for us. And you finished it in time to go to Gunnersville last year to try for a world record. Well, after the colonel got killed, uh, I believe Les got the boat done somewhere in November. We, we worked on the boat all winter and did go to Gunnersville and try to, to break the world straightaway record in, in uh, May, I believe it was. You also tried to make the boat competitive through almost two-thirds of the season, did you not? Yes, we had a lot of heartaches with the boat. It just wouldn't corner. It wouldn't stay up in the corners. And finally, we give up on it on the uh, race before the Gold Cup, and I traded it back into Les Stoddicker on the, the boat that... Uh, we bought the San Diego for the Gold Cup and were fortunate enough to win two heats and we broke twice and I think we ended up uh, fourth overall. There's quite a story behind the Chrysler Hemi engines that power the pride of pay and pack. What better man to tell that story than the man who designs and builds these engines better than anyone in these United States? Keith Black of Southgate, California. Bill Sterrett came up with the idea of the twin Chrysler engines in an unlimited hydroplane, and uh, I think in a couple of years he proved that it had definite potential, and I think it showed very well. Just a matter of getting the proper crew and the proper hull and uh, getting all the bugs sorted out. I, I believe it has definite possibilities. But Dave, 
Why did you decide to build this present Pride of Pay and Pack? And how did you decide to build it? Well, I think the reason I, we had it built or decided to have it built, Phil, is uh, first off, we want to beat somebody. And, and uh, the only way to beat somebody, I feel, is to do something a little differently. Uh, also, another big decision or a big part of our decision was the availability of our, our Rolls equipment, our engines, and also qualified people to work on this. And this had a lot to do with it. Crews are hard to come by, good crews, winning combinations. And uh, so I looked around and uh, decided that I was, if I was going to stay in the sport and be competitive, I was going to have to get something that, that would run faster and uh, would be easier to work and get and the availability of parts would be a lot easier. So we decided with Ron Jones and Keith Black on these Chrysler engines to give this a try. And uh, I sure hope it's going to be very successful. For over 25 years, Rolls-Royce Merlin or Allison engines have powered these unlimited hydroplanes. For over 20 years, the three-point hydroplane with the engine in front of the driver has been the norm. And now comes the pride of pay and pack, a 16-cylinder revolution, as it were, a hydroplane dedicated to the proposition that automobile engines and low-profile design can win national championships. This is the story of the pride of pay and pack before the 1970 season begins. You'll be hearing more chapters from week to week as the Thunderboats trek across the United States.